passing the football, and they got some quick scores. They look very good at this point. Sure, there's some penalties that make everything look bad at times, but that goes with the first game. But overall, you got to be impressed the way the defense is coming on, and especially the offense with Ray Lucas at the throttle. Let's take a look at some first-half highlights, and one of the highlights was the first touchdown. Ray Lucas scrambling for eight yards to give the Scarlet Knights the lead. 14.06 left in the second quarter as Lucas pulled the ball down and got it in. Now, Bob? Here we go now as he fakes here. Good play-action pass, and he looks over here in the corner, and he just lets this thing go, and Harper... The young kid from Atlantic City with great speed, the guy they call a game breaker, gets behind the secondary, makes the big catch, and runs it in for a score. And that really brought everybody to their feet and made this thing happen. That's a big score for this young receiver, Harper, and a big score for Ray Lucas to be able to throw it up there. Mike Challenger here intercepted by Curtis Tribbett, and Tribbett goes in 28 yards for the touchdown. 10.03 remain in the second quarter, and Rutgers had itself a 21-0 lead, and that really keyed the defense, Bob. That 4-3 look looks pretty good as Bob Sneathan tees off. And Sneathan, who's been putting pressure on this quarterback all first half, comes in and gets Challenger clean, but he's been doing that, and that's part of the defense. We've explained it, that this permits Sneathan to let go and really play the run and go after the quarterback, and because of that, I think you're going to see that guy in the backfield with a lot of people all fall. Well, the Rutgers defense has been a factor, Bob, because they've allowed just 97 yards total offense to Kent in the first half. They've come up with a turnover for a touchdown and uh, so a lot to be happy with on the defensive side. What about the Rutgers offense? Well, offensively, I think they sputtered at times. They really came out to try and run the football with no success at all. Then they opened up and started throwing on the early downs, and you see that passing yardage start to accumulate. They got a score through a pass. I think they'll continue to do that. I think the only negative thing there is the five penalties. Those things hurt, but overall, I think you got to be happy if you're up 21-0 at halftime. And I'm sure Doug Graber and the Scarlet Knights are. Well, the second half kickoff is coming up. The Scarlet Knights have played a good first half of football in this opening day for the stadium. It's Rutgers 21. Kent, nothing. We'll be back with the second half kickoff right after this. Fielded on the 14, not fielded. Dropped by Robert Moore. And then he gets to the 16-yard line. Host of Rutgers players led by Thomas Kelly making the stop. I think it's impressive. I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. I think their, their coverage has got a lot of speed on it, a lot of guys looking for the football, and that's going to be so important to them. Again, a great job by the, the, the coverage team, and that's a new assignment for Rich Rachel this year, and he, of course, goes after it with great intensity, and it looks like it's starting to pay off early. Steve Pratico also helping as we look at the quarterback comparison. Five for 12 for Mike Challenger as he gets ready to direct the offense. Ray Lucas. Of course, a 60-yard touchdown pass to Stephen Harper. Here's the handoff to Astrid Watley. And Watley goes ahead for a gain of three to the 20-yard line. Jim Vernera, number 93, making the stop for that Rutgers defense. Play selection, well, Early on, Kent trying to do it on the ground, forced to pass on that final drive late in the second quarter. And Rutgers trying to establish the ground game with 18 rushes in the first half to just 11 passes for Ray Lucas. Fullback fell forward, flag on the play. Omar Williams started forward, slipped as he placed his hand down, and so no doubt they'll bring this one back. He's so, uh, he's, it's so unusual for him to carry the football to get too excited too soon. Unfortunately, he's going to get called for it. He came from the referee who was standing right there. You know, Williams last year carried the ball 42 yards, 42 times for 143 yards. He's got real size, 5'9", 195. He's a good blocker out of Orlando, Florida. A little mix up that time. They tried to slip it to him. Bob, if you're Jim Corrigal, what do you try to accomplish in this opening drive? Hey, you're, you're trying to get a, a, some, some kind of continuity in your offense. You're just trying to make some first downs and maybe potentially get a score. I don't think he's going to change his game plan. He doesn't want to throw this ball all around because that could only lead to disaster for him. He's trailing 21 nothing just to establish some consistency and uh, get the ball upfield. In the eye formation, they hand off to the tailback, Watley, and he did not get back Watley. to the line of scrimmage. Met by Guarnera. Guarnera in on the tackle again. So the junior from Plainville, New York, very active early on. And 
That front four, Bob, seems to be coming more and more familiar with one another as they begin to shut things down up front. They've got the players in the right position. You got Sneathan and Bryant perfectly matched in this in this uh, defensive setup. Swinger, who came along with quickness and balance in the preseason, and in the spring, and Guanera, who just gives you a hundred percent, and that's all you can ever ask, as Coach uh, John Goodikens called him. That. And there's your pressure. They just squeeze the quarterback. Tough situation to be in. Take your pick, Bob Sneathan, in on his third sack of the day. Rudy Smith, number 56, was also there for the Scarlet Knights. Just watch these guys, and the four of them up front just contain the quarterback. Just keep him in the pocket. Just drive that offensive line back as it goes. Here comes Smith on the outside, Sneathan on the other side, and just squeeze him and in the middle. Big number 91, Keith Bryant. Punter is Ken Walters, who have to do so from his own end zone. Funderburg catches on the 38. Reggie Funderburg with flags flying from the heavens here. Gets down to the 28-yard line. Berkeley Claggett makes the tackle. We'll have to sort this one out. There's going to be some penalties here. They were pointing uh, at the Rutgers blockers downfield, so it looks like it's going to go against them. Pushing the bag. On the receiving team during the return. First down. Nick Define has the Rutgers return team and the penalty, and here it is. Let's take a look. Well, he's calling that on number 86, Jason Curry, and actually the defender was falling down as he was doing it, but he called it that way. Maybe it happened earlier. So it pushes him back close to the 50-yard line, but still in very good field position. Well, Ray Lucas comes back out onto the field as the Scarlet Knight quarterback. got a chance to take a break so time out on the field we'll be right back to Rutgers Stadium in a moment last year injured his shoulder separated his shoulder only played in seven games gained 741 yards and scored four touchdowns on the ground 830 all-purpose yards last year Lucas off the play fake to Presley. Plenty of time with good coverage. Lucas still with the ball. <laughs> Finally sacked by Mike Barry. Bob, there's a case where you, you got to get rid of the ball. He was looking early to get rid of the football. He didn't see an opening. He should have thrown it out of bounds. But he's always, he's such a natural athlete as you watch here. He's always looking to make something happen, and he can. But he's in the pocket. He's got great protection. Just good coverage on the part of, uh, of Kent. Here he goes. He starts to run around. And now, really, he should unload the ball. Instead, he's still looking to break, and he takes too much of a loss. And those are the little things that at this stage in your career you can't afford to do. You should know better. Loss of nine yards on the play. That'll bring up third and 21. Funderburg is split to the left. Harper now comes in motion. Bridges is in fullback. We'll hand off to Presley. Bruce Presley gets a lot back down to the 43-yard line of Kent before Mike Lockett wrote him down. Probably the best rush of the day for Bruce Presley. And that's the call you're going to make when everybody's expecting the pass. Give him a chance to run it. He came up with good yardage, not enough. Rutgers will be forced to punt. But that, that particular series was not very impressive. Not a good first down call, so they're forced to punt. Sloven punts. And again, it's a favorable bounce down to the nine-yard line. Great job by Sloven. He was rushed that time. He had a lot of pressure. He got the kick off, got it off the side of his foot with enough bounce, though, to get good field position. A 36-yard punt for redshirt freshman Jared Sloven from Tucson, Arizona. First for the Golden Classics. So now the Rutgers defense has Kent right where they want them with the... Their backs to the end zone. Rutgers going with the defense they started with, with Schwartz and uh, Catano on the outside, Sneathan and Guarnera, Swinger and Bryant up front, the four down. Giddings in the middle at the linebacker position. Hanson in motion. Watley works his way out to the 10-yard line, gain of one maybe. Jim Guarnera in that front four beginning to dominate. 
Well, Doug Graber talked about his defense, Bob. He, he said, we're, we're still learning all through camp, but we're playing hard. And he said, this 4-3, not only are we going to be more aggressive, it, it's a simpler defense, and it also allows more flexibility if, if Rutgers runs into some injury problems where guys can play more than one position. Well, he, he, he looks at that. Uh, it's simple, as we know, and it's very adjustable, less thinking on the part of the defense, particularly the down four linemen, and it can make them more aggressive, and that's the key. You can use four good cornerbacks to play. Uh, they'll see a nickel, though, six defensive backs, seven defensive backs at times. The key is that uh, they don't put themselves, they put themselves in that position. As you look at Keith Bryant, a veteran. I talked to John Gutekunst about being in the Big East, having coached in the Big Ten, having coached in the Atlantic Coast Conference, having been around college football for more than 20 years. And he, I said, how do you feel about this? One of the beauties of this, this conference is you can win a national title. He says, you only have to go four to five hours to recruit people you really need. And he says, you've got a variety of great teams with great offenses, Syracuse running the option, Miami, the one-back offense. Very excited about being a part of the Big East. Omar Williams, the fullback for Kent, Omar Williams, carrying the ball, the picks ball up a couple. We saw Keith Bryant come off, flexing his neck a little bit. He's being attended to on the sidelines. So third and six, facing the Kent offense. They've gone all the way with quarterback Mike Challenger. They also have sophomore quarterback Lance Reisland available, his father, the defensive coordinator for the Golden Flashes. Hanson in motion with Mark Britt. Deployed wide to the left. This is Watley hanging on to that football. Cuts it outside. Gets the first down. First down. Kent as Watley gets across the 20-yard line. Just tough to tackle. He's, I mean, he, there was no hole there. He just made it on his own. He's got great balance. He can start from a, a standing position. He just got it out and got the first down. He's really been impressive today. Watley doing a lot on his own. Bob, he really took care of that ball, too, as he hit the line of scrimmage. Very interesting. That if you look down the lineup for Kent, their players come from the eastern, northeastern Ohio area. Watley from Warren, Ohio, and from that western Pennsylvania area. They don't go very far to recruit either. That's they a don't great area. Yep. Not kidding. This is Watley again. Met at the line of scrimmage that Watley. time. His 24th carry of the game. Before that rush, he had 79 yards. John Gutekunst, uh, the defensive coordinator, is sitting right there. That's John Gutekunst. Here's Stan Parrish, the offensive coordinator. And John uh, is calling the plays. He's got to be happy. First time out, he's throwing a shutout here, and he wants to keep the pressure on these guys. So important what you develop here, the habits you develop here, looking down the road at the, the kind of opponents that Rutgers has to match up against. Hanson wide to the left from the I formation. This is Challenger. Rolling to his left, chased by Steven. Challenger goes airborne, takes a lick, but crosses the 30-yard line, and looks like he's picked up another first down. That was something he had to do. Second down and 11, Rutgers looking for the pass, giving Challenger a chance to get on the corner, and that time he got outside of Sneathan. Sneathan's going to be lined up on the right side. Little play fake, but he's really looking to throw the football. As he comes out here, he sees the corner. There's Sneathan trailing the play from behind. Can't make it. And Challenger, a tough kid, 6'2", 193 pounds. He can run. And he gets the first down. Keith Price and Thomas Kelly were waiting for Mike Challenger, but not before he picked up 11 and the first down. Ball now on the 32-yard line. Hand off to Omar Williams. And Williams gets good yardage from the fullback position. Price. Nothing fancy as Keith Price comes up, the senior out of Ferris High School in Jersey City. Brings down Williams, but not before Omar picked up five yards. We haven't seen much of uh, Tony Britt or Mark Britt, two brothers that play on his team as receivers for Kent, who have speed and get you deep. Lance uh, Hansen, number 20, has caught a pass for a big play today early in the game. But they really haven't thrown that deep pass, and maybe they're just going to be content, as they do here, to run that football for a while. But sooner or later, you got to believe that uh, Jim Cargill is going to have to put the ball up. Well, Keith Bryant is back in the game for Rutgers. That's a good sign. Important to have Bryant in there. He's got size. He's got experience. He's got intensity. 
Kent loses a yard on that play to set up third and six. And one of the problems with Keith Bryant is that he has had some injury problems in the past and keeping him healthy. He was one of the top 25 high school players in the nation on the defensive side when he came to Rutgers as a freshman. Out of a town called Largo, Florida. They were really happy to recruit him. Challenger sets up, pocket collapsing. Swinger coming. Oh, what a block Watley threw on Rashad Swinger. Swartz came up with the tackle to force Kent to punt. But that's what's impressive, Pat, and that's what you got to look at. You got a guy like Rusty Swartz, and you got a guy like Catano, as we talked, that can run you down. Play action pass. He's really looking to set up. He doesn't have anything. Look at the pressure. Look at how they keep him in this band. Now he gets outside. He gets beyond Sneathan, and watch 99 as he tracks him down. But look at over here. There's Swartz at number 23 in the secondary. That's Mark Washington coming up for the hit. Ken Walters gets a good punt away. Well, goes out of bounds, is down at the 43-yard line. So Rutgers takes over first and 10 from their own 43. Jim Corrigal's Golden Flash's trail, 21 to nothing. He's, a, he's really a, a workhorse in that backfield coming out of Ewing High School down by Trenton. He makes the catch coming out of the backfield. But everybody was roaring because they saw Reggie Funderburg from the wide receiver position just run a streak pattern up the field, and he got behind the secondary. It was a sprint out. It was, it was a designed play. He was coming to the fullback out of the backfield, and he picked up a couple of yards. This time it's Harper that's put wide to the line, but they hand off to Bruce Presley. Presley gets into Kent territory. Down to the 49-yard line, linebacker Brian Miller comes up and makes the tackle. And here comes Terrell Willis as Presley comes out. Brian Miller, a junior. Third down, short yard. It's third and three. An interesting down for any quarterback. Rutgers has run the option in this series, uh, in this game so far, with uh, most of the time, number one, Lucas keeping the ball, but we knew from the last time he ran it that the pitch was there, but he doesn't like what he sees. He's going to call timeout right now. Well, Ray Lucas had wide receiver Jonathan Gibbs, number 15, in with Stephen Harper, deployed to the left. Well, we have a chance. Let's check out the Rutgers schedule and see what lies ahead for Doug Graber and the Scarlet Knights. Of course, next weekend, the official dedication of this Rutgers stadium, and they host Don Nealon and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Wow, that's no easy schedule by any stretch of the imagination. Well, this is the Big East, and this is what we were talking about earlier with John Gutekunst saying uh, being in the Big East, you can win a national title. When you look at that schedule, there's teams that have won national titles. But Rutgers has got themselves in a big time of football. They've got the big time state and now let's roll the dice and see what can happen. And uh, I know Doug Graber is anxious, very anxious. But there's a lot of things at play in football programs, and one of them is the scholarship rules, the way it is, the number of people you can recruit. I'm sure certain schools have bet the benefit of the tradition of recruiting top players, but uh, it's a lot more even now. And uh, surely Rutgers is starting to show that with the type of athlete they've recruited, particularly in-state, and now some of the quality players they've been able to get out of state, whether it's Florida or Maryland or Pennsylvania or New York. And that's starting to happen, and that's going to be very important. Ray Lucas, one of the strong players Graber has recruited, as is this man, Terrell Willis, and he is wrapped up, tackled for loss by strong safety Roger Jones. That's a very interesting call on third and three. Running the ball right up inside. Uh, very interesting. I thought maybe they'd try to get outside. Here's the, here's the, everybody coming off the football, but watch how close these linebackers are to the football. And as he gets the football, look at the penetration, number 12 coming in from the corner. Actually, Roger Jones, a safety, strong safety, comes up to make the hit in the backfield. Jared Sloven on to punt for Rutgers. Fair catch signaled by Vance Benton at the 26-yard line. A 26-yard punt for Jared Sloven. 4-13 left here in the third quarter. And neither team has got much going in the early stages here of the second half. Getting a little darker now. The lights have been on since kickoff here at Rutgers Stadium. Well, people could say Rutgers is trying to keep things under wraps. I don't think that's the case. They really haven't had the ball that much in the second half. 
Uh, they're just trying to get themselves on track a little bit. And uh, Kent, of course, has been deep in their own territory throughout the first uh, six or seven minutes. Britton Hansen, split to the top of the screen. Here's Watley. He is brought down by Mike Bressel, a sophomore from Ventnor out of Holy Spirit High School. Missed spring practice, but has begun to pick it up and really began to come on, according to defensive coordinator John Kudekens, by the end of this uh, fall camp. He's six foot, 230 pounds, and he gives depth to the linebacker position. So it's very important that Bressel comes along. Brian Sheridan can play in the middle. They're going to probably use that freshman from Cherry Hill East, Scott Peeler, son. So all those guys are going to play along with uh, Giddings, the, uh, the transfer from uh, up in Canada. Straight dive ahead. Astrid Watley again, tackled by Keith Bryant. We're starting to see some substitutions in there, too. Uh, a few new players, as we called Bristle. Give people a chance to get some experience. Thomas Kelly looking to the sidelines to make the defensive call. Michael Roberts is in. As Rutgers goes with its nickel package. Challenger looking downfield for Britt. And Keith Price stood his ground hand position on Mark Britt. It was incomplete. Good job. He tried to go deep. Britt, who's got some speed, tried to get by Price, but we know Price. Price is a senior out of Jersey City, and he's played a lot of football. Had an injury last year late in the season, which hurt Rutgers, because he gave them the depth they needed so badly in their secondary when guys were going down. But he's back. He played that pretty well. Ken Walters on the punt now for Kent. And he'll back Reggie Funderburg up with this one. Funderburg fields on the 24-yard line. What a block by Catano. And a flag flies late. That may negate Funderburg's effort. 48-yard punt by Ken Walters. We have a push and pull back by the receiving team during the return. First down. With the timeout on the field, Rutgers 21, Kent University nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. Hard line, gain of six, Berkeley Claggett. And Rich Yerkowitz on the tackle. You know, the, I was just going to say the plays are coming in here. We see number three, Ralph Saka. Highly recruited quarterback from Del Rand signaling in the plays there, Bob. They're giving him a lot of experience, getting a feel for the game. That's an excellent idea to get this young quarterback knowing what's going on. He plays an active role. He's involved. He's standing right next to the head coach. Same role that Ray Lucas played. Here's the handoff to Willis. Willis tries to get outside the block of Marco Battaglia. Sean Howard makes the stop from the defensive end spot. Bob, how would you uh, classify the running so far of both Willis and Presley? I don't think you can really criticize their running. They haven't had much room to run. Give uh, Kent uh, credit. They've done a good job with their down four linemen and their linebackers getting up into the seams and making it difficult to get any cuts. What's happened here, what's permitted them to run some when they did, was their ability to throw the ball early. So what's happening here now is that they're just sitting in there playing on the run, waiting for them to throw the football. There's seven, eight men up on the line of scrimmage right now defending. Pretty tough to run against. Ray Lucas intercepted. Wide open was Rich Yerkowitz, the Kent linebacker, who had it thrown right into his hands. The senior from Parma, Ohio. And he returns it for nine yards. It's hard to see on the corner right now, but here comes Lucas back. A little play fake here to Presley as we let it roll. As he comes out of it, he's looking to the right side. Now watch as Yerkowitz steps right up in the seam, right there, makes the catch. He gets back with some yardage. He gets pretty good field position for the first time in the second half for Kent. But Taglia was in the vicinity. So was Reggie Funderburg. It was Yerkowitz coming up with the Lucas pass. Challenger drops the ball. 
and then falls on it and recovers after a loss of three yards. He was looking to come right out and run play action pass and throw, which oftentimes happens after a turnover. You get the ball back, good field position, go in, give him a strong run fake, and put it up top, try to get a score. Never had a chance to handle the football. He's had problems with his center, problems with uh, handling the football from his center, the freshman, that time Hallen, but I really think the problem was with the quarterback. He never Second really down. executed. Bay split to the left, Hanson to the right. Hand off to the fullback, and that's a new fullback, Chris Morgan, number 42. Number 42. And he Morgan. is a low, 5'10", 248 pounds out of Duquesne, Pennsylvania, and he's only a freshman. Had a great high school career where he rushed for over 3,000 yards in that Western Pennsylvania League, so he's a player. Chris Morgan, 42. Clock running now, 25 seconds and counting in this third quarter. Challenger's got seven on the play clock. Now it has to hurry. They operate from the I formation. Challenger wrapped up, gets out of seat and sack, and then is tripped up as he crossed the 34-yard line. Bobby Sneathan had a chance to get him. Challenger instead picks up three, and the third quarter has come to a conclusion. One thing you can count on as teams play Rutgers, they're going to have to block Bobby Sneathan. They're going to have to handle him. He came clean again. We'll take a break. We've played three quarters. Rutgers leading Kent 21 to nothing. We'll be right back. I'm Jerry Henry, host of Another View. Join me each week as we cover the... Checking our stats through three quarters, Rutgers has rushed for 89 yards. Opening play of the fourth quarter, and Ken Walters is back to punt for Kent. They trail 21 to nothing, and he gets one high. That looked like a Cassiola pitching wedge, but it's going to be down at the one-yard line. Mark Porter, the tight end, down the ball, a 30-yard punt, but they did what they wanted to do, Bob. I think that, you know, he's a great punter, this kid. He's got a good reputation, and he just kicked the ball up and got enough turn on it, but he got the bounce going his way. Uh, puts Rutgers in tough field position right now. Back into the ball game at tailback as they continue to alternate is Bruce Presley, the junior out of Highland Park. Checking our stats through three quarters. Rutgers has rushed for 89 yards, passed for 132. And Kent has totaled just 118 yards of total offense against the Rutgers defense. But Ray Lucas would like to get things going. The ball on the two-yard line as they take over. And here comes Bruce Presley. Bruce Presley. He gets some, some breathing room out to the 10-yard line. Maury Norris, the middle linebacker for the Golden Flashes, makes the tackle. Important here, just hold on to the football, try and get a first down, get a little feet, better field position. All these are situations that you go through in the course of the year, so it's a good experience again, again for Ray Lucas and this offense to be in this situation. They'll send Funderburg out to the left. Bruce Presley, 10 carries for 49 yards. They get 11 carries, and it's a first down. Rutgers as Presley, Presley carries. carries with a Rutgers first down. They came out that time in a power eye set, which they did the first time they ran the ball out of the end zone with Presley in the deep back position. That's a good. See, they've got, as we look at this, they've got a fullback right here, a halfback right here, and Presley in the tailback, and they can run up behind these guys for the extra blockers, and that's what they did. Presley followed them here as he follows number 32, his fullback Bridges, who gets up on the linebacker and gives him a chance to make the first down. Pat Gorman is also seeing some time now. He is in at center, and Willis checks in for Rutgers. Here's Terrell Willis. He is hit at the line of scrimmage and Willis. spins ahead for a tough yard. Jennings, the defensive tackle, number 90, brings down Willis. Brought down by number six, Steve Simonowski. Also in now at 
the left guard position number 63 is Matt Brown a junior from Trenton who transferred from Nassau County Community College that's been a successful program over the years and one that Rutgers has tapped on a number of occasions here's Lucas rolling right he has Bataglia Marco Bataglia stretches out in the vicinity of the first down marker Maury Norris makes the play you can't run this any better. Let's just hold it for a second. Lucas is going to make a very strong play fake here and come out on bootleg or counter action, and he's going to hit his tight end in the flat, and it's run perfectly. We talked earlier about how these white jerseys all flow to the football. Now he sets up, and here comes Battaglia on the left side in the corner, wide open, gives him the football. He's got enough speed to get on the corner and come up just a yard short of a first down. Third and one. There's the power eye again, Bob. Willis. Dodging and juking for the first down and more out to the 35-yard line. Rich Yerkowitz makes the tackle, but Terrell Willis, Bob, I, I don't know, is he is he trying to make one fake too many, do you think? No, that, but that's his style, and you don't yeah. change that. That's what made him the, the great back he was last year throughout his career. He's always looking for the cut. Sometimes he looks maybe too often, but he does things instinctively, and he's going to make the big play, and you stay with that. You stay with that. Gives you a lot of shoulder, a lot of hip fakes, and then he's gone. Stan Perry says, every time he touches the ball, I expect it to be a touchdown. There's Lucas for six yards, or rather Willis for six yards on first down. Yerkowitz on the tackle. Let's watch the top of the screen. Look at the blocking up at the top. Good blocking by Robert Barr, the right tackle, and Brown, the right, right guard, block down, give him a chance to break it outside and pick up seven yards. Willis now, 14 carries, 59 yards. Bridges in the backfield with Willis as Woolridge comes in motion. Here's the pitch to Terrell Willis. And Willis fights his way to midfield. First down, Rutgers. You know, the interesting thing about Terrell Willis, the thing, part about him, is with all his moves, he's still a pretty straight-up runner. You notice that? He really gives you a lot to shoot at. And he's amazing that he doesn't take more real hard hits because he's moving all the time. Now he's out, and they bring Presley back in. I think Presley came out for a minute. He might have been... He might have uh, had a, a, a slight injury or perhaps an equipment problem, but he's back in the ballgame at tailback. Nice when you can take out a Willis and put in a Presley and vice versa. Here's Charles Woolridge in motion. Pitch to Presley. Presley drives the defenders back to the 43-yard line. Rich Yerkowitz made the stop along with a little bit of help, but Presley just lowers the shoulder. He now has... 12 carries for 62 yards. It's interesting, the style of running. Presley, of course, a little bit more over, giving you less than more of the shoulders, gets down and really rumbles. Here they're in the power eye set on second and short. And off to Presley, straight ahead. In on the tackle, Norris. Well, there it is. There is a storm warning, but the storm being thunder and lightning. Bruce Presley and Terrell Willis. The two highly acclaimed running backs for this Scarlet Knight team. Interesting. Third and three, they're going to substitute. They bring Willis back in a tailback, and they bring the big wide receiver, Chris Hutton, the red shirt, the freshman, excuse me, from Burlington, New Jersey, in at the wide receiver position. They spread the field here. Hutton is foot wide to the right. He is six feet, five inches tall as... West Bridges comes in motion, and Ray Lucas has to call timeout. That timeout was called from the sideline. They did not have the set or the substitutes they wanted in the game, and that came right from Doug Graber. 10.28 to play here in the fourth quarter. Stephen Harper, Ray Lucas conferring with Doug Graber and Mose Rising. There's Chris Hutton. We talked about Hutton, Bob. Freshman from a Group 1 school, Burlington Township. Runs a 4-6, is a big leaper, and according to uh, offensive coordinator Stan Parrish, Hutton has a chance to be one of the best freshmen we've ever had. Well, we have a chance. Let's take a break. We'll return to Rutgers Stadium right after this. As the principal of a public high school here in the state of New Jersey, I must tell you that our participation in the Searcy Distance Learning Project has been a significant